Good morning everyone welcome back to my channel so just an update on my little angel now the little angel was a gifted panel from Susanna from Vintage Blend Studio and she challenged me to do something with the little one of or all three of the little angels so I chose one and I've cut it out you would have seen that in the last video and I've now started to embellish now in my threads I found some gold threads so the first thing I did you'll probably notice beads everywhere but the first thing I actually did is all of the yellow sketch lines that the artist had used there's some around the wings around through her hair around through her rose um, and sort of hints of it around the top of her halo here I stitched a running stitch of the gold thread I then went around her entire body and it's just given the piece just that little bit of sparkle. Now I've started beading and once again followed where the artist has gone and just stitched little beads all the way around her halo. I then chose a little red bead and went around the top of her little, or well, the very top edge of her halo. And I did three little beads and sort of brought my needle up one side and took it down the other. So it sort of has that wrapped look to put a little red edge. I've come along the side of her little dress with some yellow beads. So I've used so far a gold, a yellow and a red. And I've just dug out because I've got this little piece through here, either side of the wing. So I've dug out a little turquoise bead. So I thought I'll have a look at that. In addition, I've started looking at some of the features on her printed little dress. And down here, if I bring it up to the camera, there is little drops of white floral uh, foliage, if you will, and red berries. So if you look down here near the word treasure, I have stitched red beads into position and then using a feather stitch I've just started picking a few of those little leaves out and stitching in a oh, it's nearly an off-white silvery it's got a bit of a, uh, a graduating tone variegation through it of cream and silver it's a Sue Spargo thread it doesn't have a name does it no, it's pearl number eight. There's a number EZM78. I'm not sure if it's got an actual name. And it looks like it goes through cream into the silvery whites. I've, like I said, I really wanted to have a play with Sue Spargo threads on this project. So I haven't really used them. And I've got a little selection of them that I bought when I was in New Zealand on the cruise. And I went to a couple um, fabric shops. And there was a lovely range of Sue Spargo threads in one of them. Actually in both of them because I walked down the footpath to the second shop and there was some more in that one as well. So I just bought a little selection. I didn't go, I didn't go crazy with the colours. I sort of stayed within the greens, some blues. And um, yeah, I thought, well, play it safe. Use colours. There's a good chance. I will, you know, find a use for. So what I'm thinking is I'll show you how I did. Oh, now it's come undone. I gave myself such a great long thread too. I'll show you how I did these three little beads. So I've anchored myself. I think this color will work. I really want her to be pretty and embellished. So I've got myself some little turquoise beads this time. I might zoom in a little bit. So all I'm doing is picking up three. Now I've got this idea. Well, I've done it before, but I haven't beaded like this for ages. And then I was watching Rachel's video where she made the bauble. And um, oh, my thread's coming up the wrong side, but that's okay. We can get this one stitched and then I'll reposition. I want the needle this side to the front 
so yeah, Rachel used this system on the Christmas baubles. That was the very first prompt as part of their 12 days of Christmas. So I thought, yeah, I haven't done that for a while. That'll make a great little edge for my little girl. So it's just a case of picking up three, sliding them through, and then I'm just trying to get a bit of an angle. So I'm sort of coming up a little bit from where I've started, and that lays the beads at that diagonal and that's it it's really simple it's very therapeutic might i say sitting here beading i do like the simple tasks you know we spend so much time figuring out our projects and sometimes the just sitting and beading yeah i really enjoy it i think it gives my mind a bit of a rest the other thing that i love doing is Invisible stitch. I was chatting to a few people on in the comments on the video, uh, one of the videos, because I'm always doing invisible stitch. And they too agreed that it's just a moment to take pause. So you could, if you're worried that your beads might come out, do that second little stitch. You don't have to because it's, well, if your piece is being played maybe with by children, you might want to do that second stitch. I did the second stitch along the bottom there, but it's probably a bit of overkill. Oh, see, I did that second stitch there and see how it's changed the angle. Oh, I'm gonna undo that. Now I've got a knot. Oh my goodness sakes. They say stitching is relaxing. Not when there's knots involved. I'm going to undo that because it just totally jiggered up the angle of my stitch. So once I've done these few, what else will I do? The red berries are pretty easy. Oh, I know what I wanted to do with you guys. Because really it's just me meandering around this little angel and seeing what embellishing I can do on her. And I think it's one of those pieces where I might, might actually pick it up a few times over Christmas and just do something else. I'd love to seed stitch her entire dress. It's just work, isn't it? But I'm coming to the end of so many projects that... I'm starting to have a bit of a panic that I'll have nothing to do when I want something to do. Isn't that just silly? <laughs> so it might be a case of I seed stitch her skirt. So I think she'll go on and off my Christmas tree quite a bit over Christmas. I have a quiet moment and I feel like doing a stitch or two. I'll pick her up and find something on her. She'd be beautiful seed stitched. It's one of those things, the more you do, the more beautiful she'll get it's great when you find a great printed fabric like this that you can see potential for embellishing I'm trying to make her really whimsical isn't that what Christmas is meant to be a celebration of all things beautiful so a whimsical little angel for my Christmas tree be just what I wanted. Oh, and there goes my phone. Seriously? I thought I'd put it on silent, but I can't really do that. We're in the middle of our Christmas season, so I might have a staff member needing to talk to me. So I'm going to pause the video. I'll finish beading these few, and I'll go and grab that phone. All right, guys. Won't be a moment. Okay, I'm back. I'm back and back. There's nothing, nothing major. Nothing major at all. So now I can continue with my beading. So I think that might be the last, last one. Yeah, I like that. That's put a little bit of turquoise into her, her wing area. 
so I'll just end that off. So I won't um, I won't bore you with doing the other side of her. I can do that at my leisure. What I do want to do next, I guess um, I might show you how I did. For those of you who have the actual panel, let's go down to her skirt and we'll stitch in a few little red berries. And then I'll thread up some of the Sue Spargo thread, or you could just use, if you don't have that, just use, um, you know, crochet cotton. Good old crochet cotton in a crew. It's like my go-to, my go-to thread. So these tiny little seed beads are perfect. And I'm just putting two stitches through each one as I meander down her skirt. Like so. I haven't done much on my little bird yet. I got him all cut out and backed, but he'll be another video another day. The only thing I did do is put some little red beads around his neck, but he's pretty much ready to be embellished. But, oh, I just knocked over all the red beads. Of course I did. Put it up there, girl. Okay. Let's dodge down, pick up some of these beads that I've spilt everywhere. That's the four in position. So you've got the general gist of just stitching on the beads. Now I might even dig out another one and do a waistband for her. That looks like an opportunity to do something. Definitely the little berries across her bodice. Um, I could stitch in some of those holly leaves with just a few little stitches. I wouldn't want to do too much on them because you'd lose the integrity of the design. So you've got to be a little bit careful with the size of your thread and your size of your stitches because you don't want to, well, you might want to hide the print on the fabric if you're not a lover of it and create your own, oh, goodness me. Just get this threaded, that's it, and knotted off. And then we'll move on to the stitch I used. I've been wanting to stitch on her little wire wings, but I'm resisting the urge until the end because um, they're just going to get in the way. They'll be catching, they'll be catching all of the threads. So let me grab a bigger needle that can take this thicker Sue Spargo thread. Feels like Wonderfill. I think it is Wonderfill. I think it was printed actually on there. Yeah, it is. It's part of the Wonderfill collection. So if you have Wonderfill thread, rolls of it, that's pretty much the same. Right, let's have a look at this particular leaf here. So all I did was just fill it in to make it look a little dimensional. So I placed a stitch, then I just come down a little bit and over to the opposite side and then bring my needle up right at the base of that first stitch. Come on, there we go. I'll take my glasses off so I can see what have I done now. Oh, this video is just going really well, isn't it? I've come through the knot. What's the odds?
Okay, let's try that again, guys. Oh, this angels is going to be the test of my patience. Really, really is. So there's my little stitch that I need to just loosen off. Bring my needle back through and then stitch that little part of the leaf down. And then we come up again. So simple as that. It's just putting a nice little detail on the top of her dress. I really, really like it. It's nice when the leaves are a little bit faded out like that too. It allows you to really, really play. There you go. And back up through the middle. And then pin that stitch down to give you the little V. There'll be two more. And that'll finish that little leaf. Gosh, I hope I'm in shot for you. I reckon I could get another one. Oh, I am using such a crowbar of a needle here. attach it to the main branch so that's it and then have a look at your design and decide where you would go next I could probably do him there but I'm thinking maybe that one that one that one and that one so it's just a case of flipping around to sort of suit your design that's before you Thread painting once again, filling it in, adding a little bling. Depends how whimsical you want to make your little angel, I guess. There we go. Anchor that stitch down. And then again. Gosh, I could spend an hour meandering around the top of her skirt with these little little leaves. Oh, you know, I'm not even on camera, am I, guys? Oh, you're probably going, Corinne. Look, you're all too busy stitching to care what I'm doing here on the screen. You're just hanging out. But if you're new and you're wondering what stitch I'm doing, I do apologise. There we go. Now I'm going to do this one over here. It starts with the first stitch. Maybe I'll get this on camera. I tell you. I pulled it down before I'd finished the stitch. There we go. That's got it that nice little V, and then anchor it down. I did toss around doing a lazy daisy stitch on them. I think I tried one, and it just didn't look feathery and furry like. I felt like I needed that furry look with the open little stitches. Probably should have done the leaves before I did the beads. But anyway, you know how it is. A million miles an hour. Oh, have I lost the thread? Okay. Last stitch and that finishes that little, little leaf. Connect it back to the stem. So we've got time, let's do one more. So the first stitch gets you started, then you start the V. It's really cute. So 
So the little bird, what I'm thinking of doing with that little one is because he's a bit of a patchworky looking little bird, I'm thinking about selecting a few of his feathers and embellishing them with little pieces of lace stitched in. So he'll be very collaged and textured. I might have mentioned that in the first video, so I'm still on that thought pattern anyway. It's not the detail to stitch like the little angel. There's, there's a little bit in there, but it's a lot more wishy-washy. I can see some words here that I definitely want to cover. So I'm thinking of cutting a slither of lace to go through there, stitching it on and another one up through there, sort of going along those lines. And then maybe with some fabric in there that's a bit textured, I can do little things like this stitching and some seed stitch and some French knots and things like that. I might end that fabric off, or that thread off because it's getting a little bit too short. But I think there is at least one more. Yeah, there's at least one more leaf there. I could even do one out to the side here that goes past her her dress. But um, so that's what I'll do across the top there. I will stitch the words that it have to be a given. I've been looking at these fronds, these palm fronds. They're so fine. If I did anything, I would need to use pretty much a cotton thread and I don't have them with me at the moment I only have you know fairly thick threads so I'll have to have a think about those um, this wing here too is something else that could be stitched and I might do some seed stitch in there I do have a yellow here maybe maybe I just outline it these threads out why do they have to make them so hard to find the beginning I spend 10 minutes trying to oh it's just there oh there you go let's have a play with this thread I like the gold nature of it Maybe I just outline her wing. She's got like two little wings before she gets her wire wings. So let's have a little stitch. Maybe um, maybe maybe just thinking maybe a stem stitch. So I get it a little thicker. So it gets like a bit of an edge to it. I could even wrap it once I get the stitch into position. We could then come through and wrap it. Don't split the thread. Oh, I wonder if I wrapped it with some beads. Would that work? Just to give a little feature. Oh, what you could do with these things is just endless. Could have probably satin stitched the whole wing in. But I'm thinking I'm going to stem stitch it. I could put a row of beads on the inside of the wing is another suggestion. Maybe the gold beads from the side of the dress. See those little black spots there? I've just spotted those. Whether they 
want to be highlighted. Maybe not because they're black spots. I don't know. Who knows where this little girl will go? It, um, the more you do, the more you see too. The longer you spend on the project, you think, oh, and now I see black spots, for example. There we go. I like that. That's a stem stitch down the side of her little wings. Let's go back up the other side. Get the point nice. And we'll come down this side. Yeah, I like that. Was thinking I didn't have any cotton here but I could use stranded cotton and pull out one thread of a green and do some stitching on those little fronds my goodness won't that be tedious So we know what we're doing with her little gold wings at this stage. It's the stem stitch. Um, what we might do is scoot down to her hemline because I have my laces sitting here and they're just burning a hole in my desk. I so want to get in there and create a bit of a layered petticoat feel for her. I think I heard Susanna say, actually, I think I recall too, one of the angels is a little bit shorter than the others. So putting a petticoat trim, if you're doing the three of them, is probably not a bad idea because then she could have a, a more ornate petticoat edge, dress edge than the others. But I have, oh, let me close the beads up before there's a disaster and I shall take your camera up a little bit. Um, I've left a bit extra of fabric on the bottom here just so that I had a little bit of support underneath her her dress. Now, these aren't real vintage, but they're really decorative. So there's even a little bit of that. Let's have a little fiddle. See, how pretty is that? Oh my goodness me, nothing like lace is there. Oh, whose bright idea was it to use paper clips? I definitely like that. And I like the idea of that. I definitely want to do some layering. Surely I can't do it in the first two. There's got to be something else I can... What about this? That's a bit, bit fancy. Is it a bit much? Is it ever too much when you're doing the petticoat of an angel? I don't think so. So I could have it going down. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Is it too much? <laughs> I don't know. It is probably. Maybe that gone is a bit softer. Oh, I do like that, but what about... No. Oh, look, you could fiddle and fiddle, couldn't you? See, I could even go... Creamy tones, no, it's just not quite suits that. Is there something smaller? See, there's all these little scrappy bits. They're always good to get, use those. Hmm. 
No. Here's another one. Oh. I haven't looked in here for a little while. What about this one standing up? Let's have a look. I'm just going to create a mess, guys. That's all I'm doing here. I definitely like this one. That's that's a definite because it just adds that soft. Let's pin it. It adds that softness to the bottom of her skirt. So let's pin that on. That was easy. Snip it off there, but I'd say I could trim that back a little bit, but we'll see. Once I start stitching it on, you'll soon know if you need to, you know, trim it all back a bit. What about this one? Sort of feel like that could stand up. If I could stretch it a little so that it, the scallops just, just make it. I like how the trees are then behind, behind the um, fence. It's like a little fence line. I'm going to pin it into place. Then it comes down to what is going to go in the middle. Taking a punt that I love those two. All right. This little guy. And then maybe that. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, no, I oh, like the others. There you go. That was, that was a bit random. See, that then will be hiding all of that thickness. Yeah, I like that. And I might even slide that up and under and let that soft lacy edge sit over the top of that. That's more detail. And then this little guy can slide under there. Okay, we've got a plan. I'll see if I can pin all that together. Is it the right way? Nope. Hold the horses. That's good. It's not too bulky and I still get to use that braid because that really caught my eye at the beginning. And then it'll be just a case to stitch it down. And that's before I even have a look at beads and pearls and goodness knows what could also go on to this. We'll see. Is it ever too much? Is there ever a point where we go past the point of no return? <laughs> Most likely. Okay. So now we've got our, our base secure. We've got our top edge. And it's just a case of what we do with this. Let's put it around the right way. There's sticky tape at the end there. I'm guessing to hold it from fraying. So I might just leave it for a, a wee moment before I get... Oh, I do like the top of that. Yeah, it's going over those dots. And I think I need to move that up a fraction. Let's get this guy pinned down. Oh, pretty girl. Longer pins. I'm picking up those little applique pins, but I need a little bit of length here. 
like it's quite thick. Now this, let's reposition. This needs to be lifted and tucked under there. I like that. I like it. Okay, and then this can tuck in under there. That's better. And it'll be out, just a case of pinning and stitching. I'd probably go through and do some big tacking stitches and then come back and just really make sure she's all I'll go a little bit past, past the edge of that. I just don't want it to fray until I've got some stitches in position. There we go. Well, that wasn't too difficult. There's the bottom of my little girl's dress. Some nice, interesting layers. So let's now get some stitches into the bottom. I don't know if putting the, those were a good idea because now they're bent. They're good when they first go on. And now they're all bent to the point of, you know, when you're going to try and get your paper clip back into shape. doesn't always work. I might just work around. This edge. Concerned that that's all going to unravel. Those um, trims can be a bit that way once you cut them. So let's just get it secured to the side of her little dress. And then I'll trim it back and then do an overcast stitch just to really make sure it doesn't. Could probably even t turn that edge over. I'd say I've got a bit of slack in there, so I'll be able to pull that and turn that too. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it around. No use trimming it if I don't need to. Yeah, that's going to be much, much more secure you just never know with some of these braids you snip them and they just start falling to pieces on you I'll continue right down there because even that lace can have a bit of a whip stitch over its edge to just stop it from unraveling. It's not as bad as the trim, but it could. So I will continue to work on my little angel and finish, finish her. And in the final video, I'll come back and we will have a play with the, the dove. And I really believe it'll be just layering in some little morsels of lace to give her just a little bit of interest. And then I'll have a look at beading and stitching and all of the all of that fun. But I think you got the general gist of how this little project's going to go. Oops, and I'll be able to stitch my girl's wings on too. If I do decide to seed, seed stitch her dress over Christmas, I don't think the wings are going to cause me too much grief because they'll be at the top. I think I've finished most of the, ow, most of the work. 
in her halo area. Let's get this edge nice and secure and then I know that I'm not going to come back to this later and it'll be all unraveled. That's good. Excellent. That is not going anywhere. Okay, so we have a plan for the skirt. I think once I meander across there with my needle and thread, it will be nice and secure. Okay. We might leave it at that. I better go and start my day. Gosh, I can't believe Christmas is so soon. Are you guys ready? I'm sorta ready. Well, I'm not really ready. I just know I've got enough beds in the house now for all of the visitors. As for food, I haven't thought that far and I'm not going to go crazy this year. Christmas is just getting so expensive and we just eat way too much. So I'm looking for good food that won't give us tummy ache due to eating too much. This is what I've got on the menu. So it'll just be a nice roast dinner with good veggies and some ham. And then the meals in between, just keep it light, keep it fresh. None of, none of this pre-packaged glug just gives me tummy ache. I guess others may want it, but <laughs> I'm the chef. They're not getting it. I want to keep my digestive system light and not feel so stodgy. It's not good for us. And you know what I noticed? You put all the effort into getting all of that trimmings. We'll call it trimmings, whatever category it all falls into. And the guests nibble at it, but because there's so much, they never finish it. And it ends up back in the fridge for the next week for me to eat. And I don't need it. So, yeah, I'm going to be very mindful of my purchases this year. And just keep it fresh unless out of a packet because they blooming don't eat it and I have to eat it so why buy it they're only there for a meal or two meals and they nibble across everything and it's all left sitting in the fridge for me and we don't need it all right guys I've had my little rant about Christmas excess eating <laughs> wish me luck I know what'll happen. I'll get to that section of the supermarket and it's the packaging. It does me every time. I'll see it all and just be like, oh, don't those fruit tarts look nice? Could do with some of those gingerbread biscuits. Be strong. I'm running out of thread. I'd be better off doing some stitching with my hands then picking up food <laughs> there's my motto for the week if i feel like a nibble go and put a few stitches into something there's the motto gonna go to that fridge or that platter that no one really finished that's sitting in the fridge go and do some stitching instead good luck with that there we go i might taut that up a bit and make sure I get that side nice and secure and then sort of meander my way back across her little dress and I need to get rid of that sticky tape as well now that I've got it under control I'll pick away at that in a minute all right guys I'm going to say goodbye otherwise we'll be here for another two hours I really need to get my day started so there's my little girl 
near my little girl. And then I will stitch her wings on and I've got the hook ready to attach it to my tree. Okay, I will see you in the next video. I'm not sure what that is, can't remember now. And I'll pop up again with the little dove and we'll have a play on her. All right, have a lovely day. Look after yourselves. Bye for now.